Hey there, it's Mike Cooch. Hey, uh, I'm shooting this video for you to share with you my recent body fat composition testing uh, results here, but also to share with you what I think will be a very, very important lesson um, that has come as a result of this process of trying to get more fit for me. So um, I moved out to San Diego almost four years ago now. And um, when I moved out here, I had put on a good 20 pounds in the year prior to moving out here. And so when I got out here, of course, I'm living in San Diego, the land of beautiful people. And I knew that I wanted to try and take my fitness more seriously as soon as getting out, as soon as I got out here. Um, and I've always taken my fitness seriously. And this is a very important part of the overall lesson of what I'm gonna share with you here today. I've always taken my fitness seriously because my dad died very young of a heart attack. And uh, since then, I have always watched what I eat. I've always exercised consistently. And um, it's just always been something that's very important to me. But it's also something that I took a very, I would say, casual approach to in terms of I wasn't doing like any sort of measurement. I wasn't doing um, any sort of, you know, short, short term goal setting to have, you know, specific results that I was aiming for. So while I was, you know, generally healthy and generally fit and, and I, you know, went to the doctor regularly, got blood tests regularly, all that type of stuff, everything checked out that I was absolutely very healthy. I was not necessarily as fit as I want to be. Um, and I'm in my mid forties now or coming close to my mid forties. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, certain things start happening to your body, right? It becomes a little bit harder to maintain, um, that, that look that you're looking for, especially when you're living near the beach in San Diego. So I decided that I wanted to take things more seriously. So what I did is I actually hired the trainer in Southern California that is most known for successfully, um, training people to, to be, kind of the, the body type that I was looking for, you know, this lean, um, fit look, not a big muscle head, you know, not that type of thing. Um, and so I hired this guy, he's up in Orange County, and that meant that I had to drive up to see him on a regular basis, he put me on uh, a plan, all that type of stuff, and I got great results fast, okay? I lost, um, you know, more than 20 pounds, lost a whole bunch of body fat, my body looked totally different, uh, I was putting on muscle, all that good stuff, and then I hit a wall, okay? That worked for, I don't know, let's call it 90 days or something like that. And then I hit a wall where I could not keep up with his program. No matter how hard I tried, um, the thing that was killing me was the diet. He had me on this super, super lean diet, almost no fat to it. I had to pre-plan all of my meals. I had to eat like every two hours. I was carrying around these Tupperware containers of perfectly measured out food, you know, throughout the day. All kinds of stuff that one, did not work with my lifestyle and two, um, it, I just felt miserable all the time. I felt hungry all the time. It was very clear that this diet was not meeting all of my needs of my body. You know, my body was giving me very clear signals of, hey man, you, you've got to mix it up a little bit. You can't just eat all this super lean stuff. So I ended up, you know, flailing out of, out of his uh, program and, um, you know, kind of got back to my old routine of, you know, re real regular exercise, but again, nothing real focused, nothing real um, specific in terms of short-term goals or measurements. So about six months ago, I said, okay, I've, I've got to get back to trying to figure this out. I'm not happy with, you know, with where I'm at and I'm not happy with just making this just this kind of haphazard thing. So I started doing more research on my own. Um, the keto diet had be, had, you know, become well known. Um, I've been a big fan of the paleo diet for a long time. So I, I, I generally ate, um, I think very, similar to what somebody on keto would tell you to eat, except for not nearly as much fat. Um, and, um, and I was not as, you know, obsessively focused on the low carbs. So I, um, I did some more research. Keto seemed extreme to me and I try and avoid extremes when it comes to health. Um, because you know, you got to give those things some time to test out and stuff like that. So I, I generally try and apply common sense when it comes to diet and exercise. But I started reading more and more about 
that you know we do need more of the good fats in our diet. That um, you know we essentially got royally screwed by our government when they released the food pyramid a long time ago. And and most of you that are watching this video, I'm sure know that caused this crazy industry of of sweeteners in our foods and and over processed foods and all that good stuff, um, which I have always known was intuitively bad. Um, and I've I've cut out. I had already cut out to a large extreme out of my diet, but. Um, what I had not done in cutting those foods out was replace the good fats um, and, and have a real conscious approach to that. So I um, found a couple of resources out there and I'll share them with you um, either with this video or in a different post, but um, I, um, I found some resources that made a whole lot of sense to me, had a lot of scientific backing to them and people were getting the results I was looking for. Just a couple of books, honestly, that I read. So I started, um, I read, read these books and I started uh, following the program that they had, both um, diet and nutrition. And then the, the other major change that I made to this approach though, um, versus other kind of diet and fitness um, attempts that I've made in the past, was that I set myself some short-term milestones and I went ahead and booked measurement on the calendar using a third party service, you know, going to a fit lab um, here in San Diego where I would get measurements done, get body fat testing done, things like that, just to create an increased sense of accountability um, in, in the program. So the result, I'm happy to say, I, I did my first body fat test um, about two and a half months ago now. And when I did that test, I had actually already done about six weeks of, of like pretty intense dieting. And in that six weeks of pretty intense dieting, and actually it was probably more like eight weeks of that pretty intense dieting, I had dropped um, about 12 pounds and I had put on a decent amount of muscle, not a ton, but my body fat measurement when I went in and did that test was 16 and a half percent, which that, that was really good. I was, I was pleased with that. 16.5% is a nice, healthy number. Um, my guess is before I did that pretty strict diet leading up to that, I was probably more in the 24% range is my best guess. So I had a lot of soft, uh, you know, soft um, fat on the bod that I, I dropped already during that, that cutting period. So then I went into a... Uh, couple month period here where I was focusing less on cutting weight and more on adding muscle. And there was a couple of reasons behind that. Again, I don't want to bulk up. I don't want to be big. In fact, my weight has not changed at all. Even though I've added a lot of muscle, my weight has not changed one bit. Um, but those resources that I was studying were talking about how important it is to rotate through these phases of cutting and then not cutting, adding muscle, um, you know, increasing your calories for a period of time and then coming back to cutting, changing your workouts over time, you know, things like that. So it was a very deliberate approach, which is what I felt like I really needed and was missing in the past. And my diet was nice and high fat. And um, so I have not been, I've not had any issues with hunger at all. So it's been quite easy for me. Um, so in the next 60 days, which is you know the period in between tests was roughly 60 days, I focused on adding muscle instead of cutting. Now the result is, I'm happy to say with my test today, my body weight has not changed. It changed by a pound and a half. I put on a pound and a half, but I measure my, my weight every day, so I know that that's just a temporary thing. Um, but I have added almost eight pounds of muscle and I've lost over six and a half pounds of fat. Um, and now my body fat percentage is down to 12.9%. So I've gone from 16.5% to 12.9%. My goal was actually to get down to 14%. So I beat that by a pretty good number. Um, and honestly, it's been very, very easy. Um, this program that I'm following, it, it just, it feels like it's not difficult at all. Now, that's all well and good. Um, what's interesting about all of this is that what it what this process has done for me is it 
it forced me to reevaluate my whole process around goal setting and what it takes for me to achieve things. And, um, you know, for, for most of you watching this video, you, you probably know I'm pretty intense about that type of stuff. I, I you know, really like personal development and I like um, being really conscious of, of what it takes to um, achieve goals and, and to, you know, live the life that I'm trying to live. Um, this program also coincided, I should say, with me going to my first Tony Robbins event, which um, I've always been a huge fan of his materials, but going to the event was definitely a huge kickstart for me um, in a number of different areas. But what this whole process did, again, was, was have me sit down and evaluate, hey, what is it that really works for me? What are the things that I really need to make sure I have in place to drive myself forward to achieve my goals in any area of my life? And I came up with eight things, and I wanna share with you what those eight things are. I hope that it will help you. Um, and I think if nothing else, what is a great takeaway from this video is to sit down and, and evaluate, you know, what are the key things for you? And do you have any sort of system or process in place that you have confidence in and that you refer to and utilize regularly? Because I think if you don't, you're missing a, a big opportunity to, to get real clarity on, on how you, um, you know, maximize your life in all areas. So the eight things, and, and for me personally, I like um, you know, mnemonic devices, what they call them, right? Makes things easy to remember um, if you can, if you can you know, tie things together in certain ways. For me, I have all of these things start with the letter M. There's eight Ms. And again, that just helps me remember it. It just makes it easy for me. And it actually works out beautifully. <laughs> so the first one is milagro. Um, if you're not familiar with the word, milagro is a Spanish word. Um, it can mean miracles, dreams, um, uh, and, and that, that definition of it is perfect for, for me for this. Um, so my, my first thing is, is milagro, right? What is my dream? What is my vision that I have for whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish? And I, I like that word like dream and vision and, and it's also um, associated with gratitude um, I think that instead of the word goal, that word um, has a different meaning to me that I think is, is really kind of a mental shift for me. I used to think of goals as just these, you know, very black and white, usually numeric, you know, things that I, I had to go and achieve and either I achieved it or I didn't, right? Very black and white. And, you know, it was either achieve, win, or... Um, don't achieve, lose. And I have learned over time that that's kind of a crazy way to live life if you want to enjoy your life at all. Um, so milagro is a great word for me because it reminds me um, that one, you know, life is a dream. I've got an amazing life. Um, and two, um, that this process should be something that is, it's beautiful to me. It's a dream. It's a vision. And I want to make sure that I've connected to that, that it is something that's beautiful and inspiring to me, whatever it is that I'm aiming towards. So that's the first M, Milagro. The second is motivation. Okay, the motivation. So in anything that I'm going to put, put time and energy into pursuing and I wanna do my best at, I wanna know what my motivation is, what my why is. Um, one of the things that Tony Robbins teaches is that you know your why is much more powerful than your what or your how, right? As long as you know the why that's driving you, you will figure out the how, you'll figure out the exact what. Um, so making sure that I've really connected to why this is important to me and, and why I'm, I'm going to commit serious time and energy and resources to pursuing that vision, that milagro. The third is a model, okay? And this is an area that I have not done real well in in the past, and this fitness approach really, really opened my eyes to, and um, and that is um, in any area of your life, and, and it's interesting because I think I've always been pretty smart about this from a business perspective, but in all areas of my life, there is some sort of model out there that has already proven 
a path to accomplish what it is I want to accomplish in almost all cases. And if I'm really trying to innovate in some area, then maybe there isn't an exact model, but there's probably something that gets me close or gets me in that direction that I can learn from and then innovate on top of that. Um, being very clear about what that model is, who that model is, what are the lessons from it, and, and what are the key takeaways that, that make that model successful, really studying that. And this fitness challenge that I've been on, I think it was such a great reminder of that because I studied and, and executed on one person's model, a person that had great success with their model, this fitness trainer, but it was not the right model for me. And I think that that's an incredibly important lesson in all of this is that you've got to find the right model for you. And sometimes that takes experimentation and, and trying some different approaches because the real low fat model, even though he has great success with a lot of people with that, did not work for me at all. And um, in, in the long term, because I could not sustain it versus the program that I'm doing right now, I feel like I could eat this way for the rest of my life with no problems whatsoever. I'm, I never feel hungry. I never feel like I'm bonking, you know, nothing. So um, you've got to spend time researching the right model. Number four is milestones. So this is another really, really important eye-opening experience for me personally. I am a very motivated person and I will grind. If you tell me that I have to go in a certain direction, I will go in that direction for years and not really pick my head up and not really question it. I will just go. Um, but what I realized is that if I don't create some milestones that are relatively short term that inspire me and provide some sort of um, marker of progress and celebration of progress um, along the way that I really am just missing out on a huge amount of rocket fuel to propel me towards my goal. Okay, if I can create short-term milestones along the way, every 30 days, every 90 days, whatever it is, and, and honestly, it can just be stuff that I just make up, um, you know, and all, along the way on this fitness challenge, it's getting these body fat tests done, and that inspires me because I know I'm gonna have to go in and drop down to my skivvies in front of people and jump into a dunk tank of water and get measured. Um, but in business, it's creating quarterly celebrations with your team or for yourself and having uh, certain things that you have to achieve to hit those quarterly celebrations and then hustling like crazy because you know that there's an awesome Vegas trip plan for you and your team or uh, there's a new car in it for you or something like that if you hit those milestones. Um, it's just the exact same thing that if you were working for a good boss, a good boss would put some sort of milestones in place like that just to get you inspired. Well, as an entrepreneur, you've got to do that for yourself. I have an incredible amount of personal discipline when it comes to generally moving in a direction, um, but putting milestones in place that excite me in the short term are rocket fuel for me. And so now in all areas of my life, I'm doing my best to very consciously put milestones in place so that I know that I'm, I'm running towards those and I'm going to have those to mark my progress and celebrate my progress. Next is measures. Um, I've always been a huge fan of measurement in business. Again, um, I, I've kept a daily scorecard in business forever. Um, but in fitness, I had not done that. I, I did not get up and weigh myself every day. I did not use uh, tape to determine if my muscles had grown. I did not go in and do regular body fat testing. I did not watch calories. I didn't do any of those things. I will never stop doing those things from this point forward. Um, they're fun to me. Having those measures to know if I'm making progress or not, it's fun to me. And you can do this in every area of your life, fitness, finances, business, uh, fun. It really doesn't matter. Um, there is some way to measure that. And the closer you get to those measures, and when I say closer, I mean the more personal you make them and important you make them, and tied to the results that you're trying to achieve you make them, the more effective they are and, and the more fun that they can be. So that's measures, that's number five. We have eight total here. Six is massive action. Um, never leave 
the setting of a goal without taking massive action, right? Tony Robbins teaches that. Um, I am a huge, huge fan of that now, and I did not understand exactly what that meant until I went to his event, and I saw the way that he approaches that, and the way that he approaches that is absolute immersion into whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. So if you, know, you wanna become an excellent swimmer, then the, the moment that you decide that you're committed to becoming an excellent swimmer, you get on the phone and you book your first lesson. There is no time wasted. That may not be the person you end up training with long term. It may, you know, uh, cost you a few bucks because you, you made a mistake and want to go someplace else. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is that you get momentum and momentum or lack of momentum is a real killer for most people. Getting that momentum is the thing that can often change the course, change the direction of, of, um, of uh, your, you know, your, your, well, your momentum, your progress, right? Making sure that you actually take that step forward in the right direction, that first step um, leads to you know, many more in most cases. So number seven then is a management process. Number seven is a management process. Um, again, this is something that I've done in business very well my entire career, which is to have very specific processes around um, watching numbers, measuring numbers, doing experiments, testing, learning, applying what we learn, having meetings with the team, all of that in a very um, set rhythm. But in my personal life, I have not done as much to establish that. And um, having that same, and it's almost the exact same operating system that I use in my business, but having that management process or what I call an operating system in place for my life as well and being very, very dedicated, as dedicated to it in my life as I am in my business is a major uh, breakthrough for me. And then the last one, eight, is me, okay? Number eight is me, that's the last one. And what I mean by me in terms of this whole lesson is who do I need to be to be the person who will accomplish this milagro that I've created? Who do I need to be? And who am I now versus who I really need to be and what's the gap there? What's the difference? What things do I have to give up? What things do I need to stop being and stop doing in order to be the person that will achieve that milagro, that will replace some of those old patterns of behavior with new patterns of behavior to make sure that I'm the person that I need to be to, to achieve that milagro, to reach that milagro. Um, there's, a, there's a, a quote, one of my favorite quotes that I, I have in my personal development journal, and I'll have to um, put it the exact quote down below here, but um, it's essentially that in order to become the person that you want to become or to live the life that you want to live, you're going to have to let that old person or that old life die, um, which, is, which is kind of a, sometimes a, a, a harsh reality for people when they first hear that. Um, it's, it's dramatic. But it's, it's true, it's true. If you are going to become that new person, there is an old person there that you're going to have to shed, right? It's kind of like the butterfly coming out of the cocoon. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to drop some things um, to become that new vision of, of who you are and, and um, the person that would achieve that milagro. So that's it, that's my eight steps. Milagro, motivation, model, milestones, measures, massive action, management process, and me. Anytime now that I'm sitting and I'm planning what I want the future to look like in the key areas of my life, I'm sitting down and I'm saying, do I have all eight of those things in place and clear so that I'm ready to move forward at full speed to get to that milagro, to achieve that milagro, that vision? Um, having a conscious process like that is so valuable to me um, to make sure that I'm utilizing all of the tools and resources that are available to me to give myself the best chance of success again in the key areas of my life. So I hope that's helpful for you. I'll let you know when I get my next results back. My plan, I believe, that just by following what I'm doing, 
and continuing to add muscle in key areas. Uh, my plan is to drop my overall weight down to 185 from 190 where it is right now and to maintain body fat somewhere between 10 and 12%. I really don't wanna go lower than that. Um, I think if I, to go lower than that, I'm gonna have to cut out some things in my life that I don't wanna cut out. You know, I like to go for a drink. I like to eat pizza and fries and stuff. Um, so um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna give those things up. Again, this is all about maintaining uh, a lifestyle approach that I can sustain over a very long period of time. And I think I've found it, so I'm not gonna mess with it. So. I will put some of the resources that I referenced down below here. And again, I hope that this was helpful for you. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.